Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I seek your attention. I know you all detailed conversation because you're meeting people after a very really long time. But what I want you all to do in the next 30 seconds is just look around, looking at people after nearly one year under one ballroom is such a great happiness for all of us. So next 30 seconds, I just want you all to look around and exchange smiles. Come on. I like this. I like it. I like how the ladies go exchange smiles. And that's why we're here. We're exchanging smiles to start with. Our brand is all about exchanging smiles. And are people still in mask here? If you could, please. Yes, I would love to see your face, gentlemen. Lovely. So, hi, sir. How are you, sir? Good to see you. I heard that name. All right. So, everybody is here. I can still see gentlemen there or oh, the mask on. Oh, he like, I want to be social distancing. This is good, sir. Very, very nice app. Okay. To start things first, I'm here. I have to go really far there. And what I need is energy from everybody here. And how is that possible? If you can get your hands together and give me a loudest round of applause, as loud as possible, as loud as possible, really far. I can't hear you all. I have to go there, really far, really far. Put your hands up and give a big round of applause. Try that. It's a good thing. Go louder, go louder, go louder, go louder. That's right. Exchange for Media, Influencer of the Year 2020, a platform that exchanged the most of masterclass people, thought, innovations, and more than that, what people bring to you on table. Today, this roof is all about people that holds the key towards a masterclass thought. And we are getting started with what is coming our way right now. My name is Mithun Upadhyay. I'm going to be the host for the first chapter here, fifth edition. And we are very, very, very happy to have you all here, making time out on Friday evening and joining us. So please give yourself a big round of applause because you deserve it. That's it. For yourself. For yourself. Okay, the fifth edition, the hi-fi, we call it, the hi-fi edition of the Influencer of the Year 2020 welcomes each one of you. Now, the award honors the visionaries who have transformed the industry and inspired the next level of growth while progressively using innovative technology for business achievements. And all this is impossible with our partners. A big thank you to a partner to start with, uh, members from the AVP News, a big round of applause to them as well, everybody together. That's all you clap, come on. After one year, you had a chance to clap for something together. And of course, our gold partner, Clan Connect and DY Elephant, and our associate partner, Media Value Works, a big round of applause for them as well. Now, it's about talking, and then a step next, it's about watching. All eyes on screen, we present to you our partners, live and loud. Here you go. Na pabandi ho, na koi had ho. Ho to bas khud banai sarhad ho. Ye muhim hai parto mein chipe har sach ki talash ki. Siyasat par rakhi pehni nazar aur aankh ki. खबरों की दुनिया में एक जिम्मेदार आवाज की जुर्म और जुल्म के खिलाफ हर बेबस के लिए इंसाफ की जब कोई हद नहीं इंसानियत के लिए जज्बात की जब कोई हद नहीं खुशियों और ख्वाब की तब कोई हद क्यों हो नए नजरिए और बदलाव की तोड़ के हदों के ताले नए सपनों को पाले बांधे सबको एक धागे आपको रखे आगे एबीपी न्यूज Change for Media, a name synonymous with the latest news about the advertising industry in India. The Exchange for Media Group, set up in 2000, has the most credible media platforms, 
covering the entire advertising, media and marketing domain with its highly acclaimed digital, print and on-ground assets. The group's flagship news portal exchangeformedia.com reaches over 6 lakh subscribers who are the first to receive breaking news in the industry. The buzzing website not only covers the news but goes beyond the obvious to bring in a fresh point of view. Impact, the weekly news magazine from the group, is the most widely read business magazine in the advertising trade with in-depth analysis and news-based features providing perspective to key happenings in the industry. The monthly pitch magazine provides a ringside view of events unfolding in the marketing landscape along with media and advertising. Another monthly magazine, Realty Plus, is a market leader in reportage on the real estate industry. Today, Exchange for Media is not only a leading publisher in the domain but owns the IP of more than 50 events spread across Mumbai, Delhi and Bangalore, making it a powerhouse of information and knowledge sharing. Exchange for Media has curated and launched some of the most successful IPs across marketing, digital, TV, print, radio, mobile, OOH and PR. The Impact Person of the Year Exchange for Media Conclave Indian Digital Marketing Awards Tech Munch Pitch CMO Summit India Marketing Awards Primetime Awards Indian Content Marketing Awards Golden Mics NBAR are some of the group's top-notch events in addition to niche bespoke events and round tables curated especially for discerning clients. Exchange for Media events attract stalwarts as speakers along with a loyal audience comprising of leaders, trendsetters and opinion makers. They are the perfect networking platform for the entire media and advertising industry. No wonder Exchange for Media group publications and events have high credibility and reach and are the destination of choice for agency, brand and media professionals across the industry. Exchange for Media BW Business World presents a rich legacy of curated events that enable conversations on policy issues in India. Because of the state of our cities, we have no option but to build smart and resilient cities. Digital India is more for the poor, underprivileged and the deprived. Covering a range of topics, BW Business World events look to create a strong narrative around smart cities, digital India, healthcare, Swachh Bharat, human resource issues, education, banking and finance, among others. The world is fast changing. Best practices are available now on the net. Because development puri rajniti mein ye focus ban gaya hai bw business world events provide a speaking platform to the voices that matter smart se taluk ye hai ki hum jo basic amenities hain usko hum chust durust kare you don't have to be a technologist you need to understand how technology influences the world mahatma gandhi was a great man he was the leader of the freedom struggle. We believe that e-governance and IoT will play a very, very important role. BW Business World is an excellent exhibition platform that helps you showcase your services to the right audience. BW Business World's digital transformation went on the fast track in 2020, marrying its legacy of credibility and robust business journalism to a technology-first world. Hosting over 250 virtual summits and webinars across its 17 niche business communities with millions engaging with the power packed content like BW Dialogue Series, Festival of Life web series, and custom created webinars and hosting 20 plus virtual summits.
33 million page views on an average, 21 special issues in 2020 hit the stands and multiple IPs scheduled in the coming months, BW has taken a leadership position in the business news segment. To become a part of our legacy, write to us at partner at businessworld.in. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for all our partners one more time to what they bring to us and been doing for so many years now. Now, to proceed ahead, it's now time to welcome a master, a master who defines a lot more different chapters in every course of life. An honor to welcome on stage chairman and editor-in-chief, Exchange for Media Group and BW Business World, the one and only Dr. Anurag Batra with a big round of applause, please. Good evening, it's my honor and privilege to welcome you to the first Exchange for Media event, a physical event as we used to do 12 months back. Uh, we're happy that we are doing it in Bangalore. Uh, we did one event in February, our PR and Copcom uh, Summit, so thank you for being part of the audience. It, it does feel surreal. This was the way we used to do things and we are hopefully back to it now. Uh, it's amazing in a country like India, like in Bangalore, I'm told you can go into any hospital and get a, a vaccination show, show your Aadhaar card and get it for 350 bucks. Really, uh, the fact that there is a vaccine, the fact that COVID is on a wane in at least uh, some parts of the country can help us do such initiatives. Uh, so I don't want to stand between you and the ceremony and the winner tonight and the conversation with him. I just want to say that uh, we live in interesting times. Uh, life is about hybrid uh, business models. Uh, physical and online and I believe the more the online grows uh, the value of physical human touch grows uh, exchange for media influencer of the year is a initiative that we started five years back we believed that um, we didn't have a award for our flagship uh, property exchange for media we had we have an impact person of the year which is in the 16th year last year it was on 20th Feb and by Jews Ravindran was the impact person of the year uh, our flagship is exchange for media and we really believe that uh, we don't have an award uh, which really does justice to our flagship brand. So we instituted it five years back. Uh, you'll see an AV, the journey of the Exchange for Media Influencer Award over the last five years. You'll see the winners have gone on to build fantastic companies. They were successful when we selected them. Uh, they were a mix of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. Uh, and they've gone on to build bigger initiatives They've uh, built large companies and they continue to be super successful. So clearly the uh, people we've chosen for Exchange for Media Influencer of the Year have what we call sustained excellence, sustained success. So tonight's winner will also be somebody who's possibly on his way up to do much bigger things and already has had an impact on our ecosystem. So I don't want to stand between you and the winner. Uh, the event is also live on exchangeformedia.com on our social media handles and I look forward to celebrating the winner and the winner's achievements at the end of the evening. My friend and partner Naval is there, our uh, uh, colleagues Ms. Neha Valke who is our head of South is there. Uh, so really we are happy along with our team to welcome you. Look forward to a great evening and look forward to conversations uh, both before the drinks and after the drinks. Thank you. Thank you so much. A round of applause for Dr. Rag Batra one more time. Ladies and gentlemen and now it's time to see who has taken all of it for the year 2020. Well, before I kind of disclose who's the winner, quickly about him in just about one quote that I personally connect with and uh, I've been following him for some time now and the best way to put him on a frame is trifles make perfection. Perfection is no trifle. He is one such example. Ladies and gentlemen, Exchange for Media, Influence of the Year 2020, all eyes on screen. Let's see who is it. Naveen Tiwari, founder and CEO in Mobi Group, lives by his philosophy of constant innovation and disruption. In a short span, Naveen has made his mark by transforming the startup into a global technology giant. An alum of the prestigious IIT Kanpur 
and Harvard Business School, Naveen took the plunge into the world of entrepreneurship quite early. In 2007, he founded MCoach, which was enhanced and rebranded as InMobi in 2008. Three years later, InMobi became the first Indian unicorn startup company. It is currently the world's leading mobile advertising platform. InMobi Group added lock screen content platform Glance and the top made in India short video content app Roposo to its portfolio. A strong proponent of India's startup ecosystem, Naveen has mentored over 60 young technology companies. Naveen has also served as a board member at payment technology company Paytm. Naveen is also a fitness enthusiast. He likes starting his day with a long run or a bike ride. Naveen has won several accolades over the years, including the Distinguished Alumnus Award from IIT Kanpur for Excellence in Entrepreneurship and the Dean's Award at Harvard Business School for his exceptional leadership and contribution. In 2013, he earned the Pathbreaker of the Year Award presented by PM Narendra Modi. For his remarkable achievements, the Exchange for Media Group takes immense pride in conferring the Influencer of the Year 2020 title to Mr. Naveen Tiwari. Naveen, I understand you're getting an award. That's awesome. Um, nothing could make me more proud. But listen, the best award uh, is the sense of accomplishment that I'm sure you have and that I'm sure you will keep on uh, buttressing in a variety of different ways. Listen, I'm, I'm sitting here reflecting on what I can say in a short 30-second uh, 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 spiel, but I just remember you sitting in my classroom was it a decade ago, or maybe two decades? You know, at my age, time blurs. Um, uh, but I do remember it actually pretty well, and I remember a whole bunch of your uh, InMobi and predecessor company teams attending some of my classes in, uh, was it in India or in Singapore? I can't remember. Um, and watching the story come up, uh, it's awesome. There have been so many times where, um, you know, he's thought of things uh, for the future, which most of us have not been able to think of. Uh, and initially you might think, you know, what's going on, what is he thinking of? And when they come true a couple of times, uh, at that point in time, then you start feeling, you know, what a great quality this is and, you know, how can he even do that? Uh, and then you start having blind faith. And I think that's one of the key things that an entrepreneur uh, should have the ability to, one, see the vision and then second, also sell that vision to, uh, to the other people. So I think this is a very, very deserved award. I think he has been doing this... Uh, every month, every day, every year and finally being recognized as the influencer of the year is there is no more apt thing for uh, for Naveen than this. So congratulations Naveen, very well deserved uh, and we're all rooting for you. All the very best to you. Naveen, congratulations on winning the influencer of the year award for 2020. I can probably think of 2008 where Inmobi was all of less than 10 people in size and we were operating out of this small gala in, in, in Mumbai. And to make a point, you actually took the board and started by explaining the overall world's GDP and how Inmobi is fitting into the, that GDP. Now, we all were looking at each other and bemused with your ability to be able to think, uh, think that big. And most importantly, bring it down to a level where it can be executed. Congratulations, Naveen. This award is very well deserved. Naveen is quite honestly the most creative entrepreneur I've ever worked with, and I've worked with many through the years. He has a unique ability to quickly understand and analyze complex ecosystems and design differentiated solutions to some very complex problems. He also has a unique ability to execute and build businesses around those solutions. It's pretty hard to find skill set in one entrepreneur. But most impressive is Naveen's passion for Inmobi's people and our culture. Congratulations, Naveen, on winning the Influencer of the Year Award. I've had the good fortune of knowing Naveen Tiwari and working closely with him in the last few years. What I truly admire about Naveen are firstly his burning ambition to be the best on the planet in anything that he does. And the fact that he's able to drive innovation at scale by backing his people and his team is truly remarkable. And most of all, the way in which he conducts his business in a very quiet and efficient manner. That's something I really admire. Naveen, congratulations. Ever since I first met you as a superstar business analyst from McKinsey now at Harvard, you've always been full of big, bold, ambitious ideas. 
and what you have seen since, whether it was in San Francisco or watching M. Koj in its early days, you know, joining the 10th year celebrations of Inmovi, is you've combined that energy and ambition with empathy. You care about people, you care about the community, which is why we all are with you. We all root for you and we want you to succeed and we want to do everything we can to help you succeed. And that's why it's been so great to see you lead in Mobi with such energy and resilience through ups and downs and through the great success of the last couple of years and with many years of wonderful success to come ahead. Congratulations, Naveen. You fully deserve this award. Naveen, congratulations. Influencer of the Year Award is such a well-deserved recognition. But this is no surprise. You've always been an influencer, always a leader. I remember the time straight out of IIT when you were figuring out how to fit into the norms of the consulting world and with a very wonderful, earthy feel question why things were done the way they were. This ability to think out of the box with empathy is a hallmark you've always carried forward in life. Hey Naveen, this is Rajit. First of all, congratulations on winning Influencer of the Year Award for 2020. This is so well deserved. You know, all of us are so proud of everything that you have achieved so far. Naveen, heartiest congratulations for yet another feather in your cap. It gives Dharni and me great joy to see the phenomenal success you have achieved with Inmobi over the last 15 years. Naveen, congratulations on this incredible award. But I have to say, I'm not surprised because I remember all those years ago at HBS with all our classmates, how you literally infected them with your passion for India. Naveen, awesome news um, and many congratulations on this award. Well done and I hope you continue this uh, awesome trajectory and building what you're building. Naveen Dost, just got to know that you have received the Influencer of the Year Award from Exchange for Media. Bhot bhot mubarak ho dost. Bhot bhot badai ho Naveen. Kuch pangtiya tumhare liye. Tum Naveen ho dost. Naveen tam. Sahasta se tumne badai safalta ka har kadam. Ham kadam aditi tumhare. Niyati bhi vash me tumhare. Avin tumhari chavi hai mitra. Khushiyan chume tumhare kadam. Bhatu and Aditi, both of you have made not only us feel proud, but the whole helmet of Rajgala village and every youth of this country will feel encouraged by your achievement. Hi Naveen, congratulations on winning this big award, Bita. I always said you are the crown jewel of our family and that's what you are. You make us proud all the time. Congratulations Naveen for receiving the Influencer of the Year Award. This has added another feather to your crown. Your vision, ability and hard work has put in Movi group of companies on the forefront of India and that in turn has put India on the world map. Hey Naveen, I heard about this awesome award that you are getting. Very nice, well done and well deserved. Congratulations to you and to everyone else involved in this journey. Naveen, Aad ka din bohoti adhiti hai tumhare liye aur parivar ke liye tumne jo kuch bhi kiya hai apne parivar ke mein ke liye aur success ki jo siriya chadhi hai tumne ho hamesha chadhte ro Hello Naveen Congratulations to me is a special award ka milna hum sabhi ke liye bhot harsh evam gal ki baat hai Ishwar se yehi baat na hai ki tum jeevan ke har shetra mein safalta ki har seedi par kamyabhi hasil karo Congratulations Naveen, very very happy to see you succeed, see you do so well I am sure uh, you will have many many more such successes I have seen you grow and I am sure you will continue to do well All the best Hello Naveen, congratulations, happy for your success and bright future. Love, blessings and best wishes from me. God bless you dear. Congratulations Naveenji on winning the Influencer of the Year 2020 award. Your dedication, hard work, resilience and commitment towards 
in Modi has been exemplary over the last 14 years since you started this company. Congratulations, Bhaiya. You truly deserve this and uh, much more. And I must say that you've come a long, long way from the crazy idea of drawing the soccer field using a helicopter to establishing the Moby Group. Congratulations, Naveen. May you grow more, more higher in life. Remain grounded as you are always. Many people look up to you. I know you will not fail them. The country wants much more from you. All the best, bro. Badai Banja Raja, how are you? I am sure on top of the world as usual. You are ambitious of the entire family. Like, Shokhiyo mein ghola jaye, Thoda sa shabab, Usme phir mein lai jaye, Thodi si sharab, Ho gaayo na shah jo tayyar, Wo pyaar hai, And that is our bhanje raja. बेटू मैं तुम्हारी इस कामयाबी पे बहुत कुछ बोलना चाहती हूँ लेकिन मेरे पास कोई शब्द ही नहीं है मैंने तो तुम्हारे लिए हमेशा खुली आंखों से सपने देखे हैं और तुमने उन सपनों को हमेशा पूरा किया है और मेरे लिए इससे ज्यादा खुशी की बात और कोई हो ही नहीं सकती गॉड ब्लेस यू बेटा कंग्रेचुलेशन नवीन ऑन रिसीविंग दिस अमेजिंग अवार्ड यू आर अ वेरी स्पेशल सोल एंड यू आर हियर टू डू सम ग्रेट थिंग्स This is just the beginning. You made it in spite of all the hurdles, and trust me, I never doubted once that you would not succeed. Be very proud of yourself. Your selflessness and dependability for your entire ecosystem makes you so special. I am always by your side. Take good care of yourself. Love you. I want to recite two lines um, that reminds me of your grit and determination. जिसने भी इस खबर को सुना सर पकड़ लिया कल एक दिए ने आंधी का कॉलर पकड़ लिया यू आर दैट दिया टू ऑल ऑफ अस एंड वी आर सो वेरी प्राउड ऑफ यू कंग्रेचुलेशन ऑन दिस अवार्ड डैड यू इंस्पायर पीपल एवरी डे एंड यू वर्क सो हार्ड यू रोली डिजर्व दिस अवार्ड एंड स्टे सेफ एंड आई लव यू Congratulations dad if there was a official category for the best dad in the world you would have won it too Ladies and gentlemen it's an honor now to welcome on stage to present the Exchange for Media Influencer of the Year 2020 before that quickly want to join us on stage right now Mr Noval Ahuja co-founder Exchange for Media along with Ms Sneha Walke and of course Dr Anurag Batra on stage right now to honor the man of the year the Exchange for Media Influencer 2020 as the two gentlemen and ladies joins us right now I take a honor and pride and request you all to please join in and give a standing ovation as we welcome the one and only our influencer of the year 2020 exchange for media mr navin tiwari Well, ladies and gentlemen, 2020 is known for many odd reasons, but one reason that we shall all cherish, and that is one name, Mr. Naveen Tiwari, founder and CEO in Moby Group, on stage at the moment. Yet again, I request you all to please give a round of applause to the man himself, who holds the key of the year 2020, Exchange for Media Influencer 2020, Mr. Naveen Tiwari. Congratulations to a very happy gentleman on stage right now with the happy presenters and at this very moment I would take an honor to pass on the mic to the gentleman if you could probably add to this entire moment First of all um uh, thank you so much uh, I'm truly humbled and uh, accept this on behalf of my uh, my team which actually makes all of these things possible but before i start i must say it is so it is so amazing to be here in front of people you know we've been missing that for the last 12 12 months um 
you know, the, the only, you know, getting on a stage was the last thing possible in the last 12 months. So I think we are, there's a lot of God's grace out here, which makes all of these things possible. And I think at the end of this last one very tough year, one thing has become very clear that there are a lot of much bigger things in life that what we would not have imagined earlier. And those things are much more important and dear, which includes family and friends. And it was so touching to see so many things being said. I'd never, I had no idea when, you, when, when your team pulled this off. Uh, it was a complete surprise for me. Maybe you did break the surprise a little bit by saying something, but I had no idea that there was so much going on there. But thank you so much. This is a great platform. You've built a, a phenomenal company out here yourself and a, a great platform for recognizing people um, and uh, truly humbled to be here. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, the man himself, Mr. Naveen Tiwari, Exchange for Media Influencer 2020. The Bangalore ki audience clap both come karti hai ki. All right, thank you so much. I request you all to please take your seats right now. Now, well, good to see you again. Okay, now, a quick journey towards the fifth edition. And then, if you thought that was it from Naveen Tiwari, no, no, no. We're going to have him on a fireside chat and a master who will pull out more from him. But quickly, on the journey of Exchange for Media Influence of the Year 2016 onwards. And quickly, on the first edition, the winner was Mr. Raj Nayak, founder, house of cheer, and former co Viacom 18. Also, on the second edition, 2017, our winner was CVL Srinivas, country manager for WPP. In the year 2018, our two winners, uh, Mr. Virendra Gupta and Mr. Umang Bedi, and founder and CEO Delhi Hunt, and the other one, co-founder Delhi Hunt. Last year, the last year, 2019, the winner was Mr. Sanjay Gupta, country manager, Google India. And this year, 2020, Yet again, I request you all to get your hands together. One more time for the man himself, Mr. Naveen Tiwari. And now, I told you, we'll not leave it at that. We've got so much more from our Dr. Nurag Batra, who's going to get on a fireside chat with Mr. Naveen Tiwari. And he's got some interesting questions that he's set up for you. But in case, look at you, why you have so straight faces? Lady is smiling, the lady is smiling, the lady is smiling. So are you happy? You look very happy. You look very happy. Very dearly happy. Who else is not happy here? Are you sure? Are you sure? This cocktail up to this. Okay, you're happy now. Okay, that works. Okay, anybody who's not happy? After how many years or decades are you with so many people? After about one year. That felt like a decade right now. So how about you be more happy and give yourself a big round of applause one more time? Oh, how many of you speak Kannada? I think that's why I'm not getting claps. Namaskara. Swagata su swagata. Chapale barbekala jorage. Oh, now people are clapping. I like it. Yes. I'm like, oh, Bangalore mein hai, thoda Kannada to baat karna zaruri hai. How many of you do not speak Kannada at all? Please learn. It's a very good language. I'll teach you. You learn from me? Say, hey Gidira. Hey Gidira. Chana Gidini. That means I asked you, how are you? And I said, I'm good. Now I'm going to ask you this question. Utaita, you know what Utaita is, right? I do. Wow, I learned. I can teach Kannada in like seconds. Did you see that? Round of applause one more time. Okay, we're ready to go into this one. And what is coming our way? I told you earlier, it's now time to get into the fireside chat. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome first a mentor who's going to take you through the entire journey of questions and much more and find a fine tune about the answers. Please welcome Dr. Anurag Batra, Chairman and Editor-in-Chief Exchange for Media Group and BW Business World. And of course, joining him in a chat show is going to be one and only our Exchange for Media Influencer of the Year 2020, Mr. Naveen Tiwari with a big round of First of, first of all, of uh, please applause. give Naveen a bigger round of applause. Really hearty one. And as you know, we've pioneered technology. If you clap louder, you get two free beers. There are cameras. Uh, automatically, uh, somebody is watching them. So the louder you clap, you get whatever drink you want. But uh, first of all, congratulations, Naveen. And thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, that was really heartwarming to see. Of course, your professional success is 
well known, but to see your family rallying around you and there was a genuine warmth. So let me start by asking you, uh, how were your last 12 months, both personally and professionally? Give us a sense of uh, what kept you busy and what was different about the last 12 months? You know, I think it's needless to say what happened in the last 12 months is the, the world's been impacted by it. But I, I, I believe the last 12 months has, you know, despite the fact that it's been so traumatic on people, you know, when it comes to health and when it comes to, um, you know, a lot of the pain that people suffered. But I think as humans, we have all come out very different at the end of these 12 months. We have all, you know, evolved very differently, probably, you know, this, you know, if you were to ask me the same question about my business, I would say digital has evolved drastically. But actually much more than that, I think our own evolution as human society and as individuals has been the most in these last 12 months. What would have taken probably every one of us, you know, a decade or two decades to get to, in about a year, we all have, you know, evolved that much. Whether it comes to, uh, you know, balancing and understanding the importance of our environment, understanding the importance of our family, understanding the importance of our own health. A lot of these things have just become so crystal to all of us and hopefully they stay with us for a long period of time. So, you know, it feels like, you know, nature has its ways of, uh, you know, cleansing the system. And this has had a very broad stroke cleansing. And personally for me, I, you know, I, the last 12 months I felt uh, significantly evolved in my own thinking, in my own, uh, you know, ways of dealing with life going forward and hopefully it'll be for the better. You know, of course the last 12 months were tough. You know, there, it started off by somehow figuring out what would happen professionally. First, what would happen personally, then what would happen professionally. And then everyone would stand up and say, look, you know, the, if you have to manage your business, you have to fire people. Uh, and reduce cost and you know we took a very hard call of saying we will not let anybody go we will keep them and but we will instead of uh, you know having few people suffer every one of us will distribute the pain and so across the company I was so happy across the company everybody volunteered and agreed to taking a pay cut in order for you know not few people to suffer because you know professionally and an enterprise cannot run if it's not um, if it's not, you know, set up rightly. And I think that set up required a different way to think about it. So I felt, I, I felt very, very proud of the way everyone, you know, stood up, not for themselves, but for the person next to them. And I think that little, you know, this, you know, at a microcosm of our company, what happened there was probably what's happening in the world. And therefore, we are all in a much better space today than what we were 12 months ago, despite having gone through so much pain and suffering. Thank you so much, Naveen. You, sound, you make it sound easy. Now, clearly, in your journey of Inmobi, it's looking very good. Uh, the numbers are looking good. You've pivoted. You've built three large companies within the company. Um, we know the successful moments. But give us a sense of some tough moments, especially in the last five years. I'm not just talking the last... You know, uh, when you're building products, when you were conquering new markets, your ambition was go big. You're taking on two big giants like Google, Facebook. So give us a sense of some of the things that didn't go your way at least the first time. Look, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of the people in the audience are, you know, have their own businesses, are entrepreneurs. The reality of every entrepreneurial journey is not in the successes. Successes are few. The, what really doesn't get told is the success is after you have done a lot of failures. And so the list of failures are way too many. Uh, but those failures are very important because that's why the success is that much sweeter. Um, I would say about four or five, in the last four or five years, we've evolved a lot as a company. Uh, five years ago, you know, we were in the uh, digital, ad we are, you know, our main business to begin with, you know, was in the digital advertising space. And it was very clear, by the way, uh, that with Google and Facebook, the way they were growing, they would take over the market. And everybody was drawing the straight line to say, you know, the market would just be taken, taken away by them. Investors had, you know, pulled away to say, well, you know what, you, you, we, we can see a trend line. And that's the re reality of life that people draw trend lines too quickly and they always go in a straight line. Uh, 
and and the writing for us at least was given to us told to us that look it's you know you would not necessarily be as successful as we thought you'd be and it's hard to be told that uh, but we were and i think from there on we we charted a very different path for ourselves uh, a path which was a slightly different from what path many other startups have taken i you know maybe 5 years later in hindsight i would say everybody should take that path because maybe because we got successful in it but there are few things that we did one we said that you know despite the fact that you have a startup that does not give you a free right to just continuously burning money you know you have to actually build a sustainable business so the first very important thing that we focused on and we thought by the way in the beginning that it's impossible to build sustainable businesses uh because nobody else had done it and why would you do this why should you do this because there is some you know line of cash that keeps coming in and you keep burning somebody else's cash that's a great sign of building a great business right but it wasn't so it's not really in, in reality you have to business has certain fiduciary responsibilities so we actually focused on that built a sustainable business it was hard but in about a year we got to being very uh, being a profitable company and we have maintained it since then Uh, not just maintain it we have actually grown it significantly since then so that was one big change that we brought in ourselves and this it gave us a sense of freedom which we which we loved uh it also humbled us a lot uh, you know we went away from a lot of media uh we didn't have you know we didn't have sound bites for media but we had hard bites in in inside the company we made hard decisions we did the boring stuff and i think business should be boring you know it is not businesses are not built to be you know in the news businesses are built to deliver services to the end customers and i think you know as a uh, as an entrepreneur in india and it's by the way it has its own advantages but entrepreneur in india getting celebrated too quickly has its challenges you know uh, and i caution a lot of new entrepreneurs today to be very wary of that uh, the advantage of that is that you know startups have gotten a huge status in the country much ahead of what they contribute in reality by the way but it is important because i think you know it it created a new new economy a new sector so that was one i think the second thing we did was we really focused on innovation uh, reality in technology businesses is that there is capital will never win you the game the only thing that will ever win you the game is going to be innovation and innovation is not to be done by you know some sub unit sitting somewhere some division of the company it has to be done by everybody we did three major uh, you know innovations the first one was uh, within the advertising space we realized that advertising in general is going to be very automated it has to be completely transparent automated has to scale without putting people on the job it has to scale by itself and it has to scale like this globally and so we took a bet on it on a direction that advertising would get to five years hence this is back in 2015 2016 um, and we and at that point of time our business in the us used to be about 5 10% 10% today we our share of business in the us is 60% um, and we we innovated in the toughest market us is the most advanced advertising market in the world and we are gaining significant share there uh so we innovated on on the core business the second thing we did was to innovate uh, on the consumer business and as we innovated on the consumer business we actually funded that business from our own proceeds which was hard but we innovated and created a consumer platform called glance which was completely done in house with you know less than 10 people today uh the platform has you know we we innovated to uh, redefine what a lock screen should be able to do on the phone and the fact that lock screen should be the biggest content platform uh, that all of us use we built that in house we are very proud of it why we are very proud of it because consumer businesses are never built out of india like in mobi fr- frankly prior to this was the first product company out of india but india has not created global consumer companies and you know glance hopefully at the scale at which it is at about 125 130 million daily active users today uh, is already entered the top 10 consumer platforms just behind uh, twitter and snap uh, so it scaled drastically 
but we didn't burn billions of dollars building that. You know, because it was a core product, we, we actually focused on building the right product. Uh, and that business has scaled quite a lot. And in the last year or so, less to are doing, we are now one of the leaders in the short video space because TikTok went away, so I don't want to take all the credit for it. Uh, but, you know, in entrepreneur's life, every entrepreneur faces too many, you know, hardships, uh, too many things going wrong. It's okay to accept one of these things and go your way. So, I, you know, we gladly kind of accepted it to say, look, yeah, we didn't do too much to, to influence that. But you know what? After 10 years, one such strong positive stroke, you know, we'll take uh, any day. So we're one of the leaders in the short video space right now. And hopefully, you know, our, my belief fundamentally is that entertainment in the country is going to change. It'll, it'll be far more authentic. It'll be far more creative. It'll be far more coming from the grassroots. And we'll enable that. So, Naveen, you make it sound so easy. Uh, but now, in 2015, you said uh, that we are a startup, and I hope we stay a startup. Now that you are at a, such a scale, um, how do you retain those qualities of being a startup? Uh, because you know, sometimes scale can bring in complacency. Uh, it can bring in a sense of achievement, which is not a value that startups have. Startups grow because they're hungry. They always want to do better. Than. So how are you making sure, even with the success of Inmobi at the scale, that it has got success of Glance, the success of Raposo. How do you maintain that startup culture? Uh, Look, we are we are just getting started. It's been it's been you know you know it's a test match, and I think we have just hit lunch, right? And uh, the lunch has just come in, and uh, it's been ten years, twelve years. So there is a lot more sessions to go. We're not building this company just. I hope the company goes far beyond m myself and you know into many generations. We are also not trying to just earn a great living for you know for the people. I think what we are trying to do is put is try to put India on the map in a very substantial manner. Uh, you know, I think we get too complacent too quickly. You know, we build a small company, a billion-dollar company, then you're very happy. That's not it. At a billion as and I say this to too many people. I say billion this dollar revenue, billion dollar valuation. I, uh, bo both are small. Good. Uh, because uh, what happens By the way, there is a new term. There was this term called, you, you know, unicorns. Now there is a new term called sunicorn. Soon to be a unicorn. So I'm sure there'll be more terms like that, but go on, I mean. Yeah, but look, the reality is it's a pathway, right? We don't, you know, if, if you become a unicorn, you don't make any dent in the universe. Like you think you're very important, you're not. You hardly exist, like you're a speck in the, in the larger universe. So if you really want to make some you know, meaningful impact in, in the world, then you have to be aiming much bigger than that. And I think the reason we, so to me, startup is a mindset, not a, not a size argument. The mindset of, the mindset of, you know, continue to have a learning mindset, continue to learn, be very inquisitive, be hungry, and execute fast. That's what a startup is. And we do that. We do that. And we kind of layer that with innovation. Uh, and I hope we continue to do this. Look, I am, the, the thing that worries me is losing this, uh, lo losing this ability to constantly do this for a long period of time is the only thing that worries me. The business cycles will come and go. We may have a, another, you know, three years later, we may have, you know, a few bad years. You can't change that. I, I don't control that. I think the only things I control are the, uh, are, is the process through which we go, uh, you know, uh, go through this. So I hope we stay a startup with a mindset. Uh, I hope we don't change that. I hope everybody becomes a startup from a mindset point of view, but you continue to grow larger. I mean, uh, again, you said that you build products in companies if you are able to see patterns. Okay? If you said you build bigger companies and bigger products and are more successful, you're able to disrupt those patterns. Tell us what are the patterns that, as we speak, in March 2021, in Mobi, Roposo, and Glance are disrupting. Look, it's a it's a very important point. You know, if we when we grow um, in our childhood, uh, you can be a very successful person if you follow some you know traditional things like you know go to good school, study well, uh, do engineering, blah blah blah. 
will all be successful. But if you, if you want to break out from that, then you should not do this. You do something else. Because if you do this, then you're not going to be, you know, you're not going to break out from there. Similarly, I think the, the, you know, the pattern recognition is historical. So you're looking in the past and saying, okay, what happened in the past is what will happen in the future, which if you can see, then, you know, a thousand other people can see. So, you know, good luck in trying to create anything. But if you really want to change something, then you have to create a pattern. To us, we, we, we looked at a few things. One was, uh, I remember, I think, first week of April last year, we sat down and said, okay, we are dead. Then we said, half an hour later, this is great. We should now figure out how to change the business. Uh, and we took a bet on five sectors that, from an advertising point of view, we were never focused on. We said, look, if this was the world that were to continue, here are the five sectors that would, look, adver advertising in uh, travel, hospitality, all of this was zero, suddenly. Suddenly your business was going to tank. We started to look at new sectors, gaming, uh, looking at uh, you know, productivity, tech, uh, yeah, fintech, all of these. We, we chose five sectors through, at, you know, those sectors which were contributing to less than 5% of our revenue. But today they contribute about 60, 70% of our business. But in a matter of three months, we, we, I wouldn't call it pivot, but I would call it, you know, you know mild uh, transformations that we led that changed the way our business was, you know. So when the business actually really came back, you know, towards the uh, end of second quarter or the beginning of July, we were right up there, you know, taking advantage of it. But that was effectively because we took, we looked at the trend and we said, we, we looked at, we looked at, we took some bet. Now we could have, by the way, all been that could have backfired big time and, you know, we would be in a worse off situation, but it's okay. I think we, one needs to take I mean, you bets. make it sound so easy and simple and so coherent, but it's never that uh, a straight line. Uh, now, you alluded to two things that I want to ask you. You know, you talked about uh, conquering a very competitive market dominated by two giants who have have, in spite of being giants, have a startup mentality, have the cash uh, to be able to experiment and be successful, Google and Facebook. So the Atmanirbhar feeling has only come in the last 12 months, yeah. but you try to conquer the world. And second is the fact that we've been a service-based economy. We've been building service companies. We've never built product companies. Do you think you'll see more and more product companies coming out of India, whether it's in the advertising space, or is in other businesses? Oh, yes, of course. So let me answer both your questions. I think uh, to answer your second question first, which is more around the product companies, absolutely. I think it is certainly going to be the case where we'll see more product companies, especially in the software space. Look, the software uh, space is creating some phenomenal companies because India has a great, India has figured out how to do high quality go to market. In fact, the last 12 months, if it, if it has an advantage, it will give India a great advantage because go-to-market does not require you to be in front of customers anymore. The go-to-market can actually be done remotely. So the, one of the earlier challenges used to be that to be in front of a customer, you actually had to be in New York or in San Francisco or Chicago. You don't have to do that. You could be sitting in Madurai and actually literally do those sales in a, in a very efficient manner. So the go-to-market bridge is actually far lower than what it was earlier. I think the software bridge we have been able to build in the last 10 years. So if I were to bet on a sector, I would bet on a software as a service sector coming out of India going global. So I would take a, you know, a very, strong, uh, very strong bet on that. I actually forgot your first question. It's about having global ambitions. Because you, traditionally Indian entrepreneurs have always thought about conquering India. Yeah, look, again, if you can, if you can build a company in India if you build a consumer, consumer company in India, uh, then your business can actually look four or five X larger if you can actually focus on taking that business in, let's say, Southeast Asia, Middle East. Because suddenly your, your scope of business changes. In reality, India is a small market. India has a lot of people, but with small market. Only 27 million people have paying capacity. So if you have 27 million people with paying capacity, then un unless until you build a commodity business, that serves everybody on the, on, in the country, it is hard to make you know, a substantially large business. So therefore, you would see a lot of consumer, 
I would suggest that a lot of consumer businesses should start to look at Southeast Asia, Asian markets, so that they can play the long game in India. The challenge is you have to play the long game in India. You cannot play, you know, you cannot, it's, we are not like China or the US where the consumers would pay a lot, you know, very quickly and you will build a sustainable business. So the sustainability of the business will only come in if you actually, you know, capture a few other markets. And it's actually not that hard for Indian businesses which basically are serving India to go and capture some of those markets. Thank you, Naveen. Uh, now, let me give you two data points. Uh, you talked about sectors that exploded. Stock market is one of them. Of course, Mr. Junjunwala keeps saying we'll now hit one lakh. Now that is 50,000 mark has been achieved. Uh, in the stock market in the last 11 months, from two crores investors in the stock market, we went to four crores plus. So a doubling in one year. Let's take a look at the US e-commerce market. From 2020 till 20, from 2000 to 2020, it was 16% of the overall e uh, commerce as in overall uh, retailing, yes. and it became 27%. So 11% in 11 months. So give us a sense of some trends that you notice, and we all in this room and in this community should be cognizant of. Look, I think there are a few. I think one, there is, it's not even a surprise that digital is going to be a trend anymore. Like It's not a trend. It's, it's prime time. Uh, but it's become prime time in a year. Right, so you know, I don't know how many of you still watch whatever uh, the Dish TV, uh, the the Tata Sky equivalent. Everybody's moved OTT. Like those things didn't happen. Like they would take four, five, six years, ten years. So I think digital leap is just you know phenomenal. I think the second one, which is a big leap, which is which has happened or just happening as we speak, is uh, artificial intelligence. Now everybody uses the term, but I don't think anybody understands the term. I don't know how many businesses really are built with artificial intelligence because it's a, it seems to be a, a, a term which is more on the PowerPoint than in reality to serve the customers right now. But I think if Indian businesses have to succeed, they have to really embrace artificial intelligence in a way to serve our customers every need. Uh, I think that's, that's going to be phenomenal because the, ch the thing with what happened with the digitization trend if you combine that with the AI trend, here is what, what, it, what it does. Because the, digitize, the, the digital market trend is so aggressive, the businesses are large, that in that sector, if you, if you leverage AI, then you, if you leverage AI or if you do not, those are two scenarios, right? So if you do not leverage AI, then you'll be out of the business in two years. And if you leverage AI, then you'll win the game in two years. So it's a two-year play, and two-year I'm being generous. So in that, in that time frame, it is not in isolation. This is not in isolation. This is in conjunction with AI because, you know, the game would just be over. Like, it will be just be over. Okay, Naveen, let me ask you one personal question. It's a cliche saying, what got you here won't get you there, or wherever you want to go. Yeah. Uh, you've been very successful. Your company has been successful. Hopefully, its best is yet to come. What do you think uh, will change in the way you operate to be able to win bigger bets that you are making? You know, I think that your, your point should be taken at, at a different abstraction. You know, when you say what got you here will not get you there further, I think I agree with that. But I think what's constant in that is the fact that if somebody has a learning mindset and your organization has a learning mindset, so then they will come up with a new thing. The challenge is to say, I will continue to do what I did in the past is a mindset of saying, I know the best. And I think when, I, when someone says, I know the best, is the time when the downfall starts. What I try to, at least, what we try to do, at least in our organization, is to remain hungry about learning. And it's hard because with success comes some bit of uh, ego. And if one can fight that a little bit off, then you have a learning mindset, we'll figure out what the next path would look like. I just don't know what it is. I don't know what the next path is, but I hope that somebody in my company, in my organization, you know, on some call is teaching me what's the next thing to do, and I hope I'll pick it up and not be blinded by it. That's the only thing I hope for. And if I, if I do that enough, you know, we we'll probably will get further. Okay, my last two questions before I bring in the audience. There is a bar and, you know, there's food and, you know, I'm sure. First is, who are your role You're not mother? being liked by too many people because, look, here is the deal. You know, we are, we are from Bangalore. You're not. 
and in bangalore we are civil people more more civil and we really like to go we we really like to go out but we don't go out that often because we are civil now that you've called all of us and the bar is there and you have kept the two of us sitting here i am telling you it is not a great sign because we are rowdy yeah. we can get rowdy yeah, if but needed you said there civil people and they're enjoying your but that's why i said let's make it quick you know when you are going on this journey do we see in mobi doing an ipo in 2021 i can't comment on it yeah. that means maybe you know that possibly means maybe so let I, me move no, I, i was taught I'll, i'll tell you what i was taught. i was taught to say what is that uh, i can neither agree nor deny something like that i am learning these things you know when you learn these things good uh, i remember meeting namin four years back uh, one maybe five uh, he was coming back from delhi that day i yeah. was in bangalore and uh, i met him uh, i went to meet you there you didn't meet me there so you uh, met really him. okay uh with the more civilized people in bangalore i wanted to spend more time here and and kind of get the rub off so yeah. uh but coming back to who are the people you look up to or take advice from apart from we saw the number of admirers in the family your classmates people who've taught you yeah. but from a scaling standpoint from an uber scaling uh, you're saying the trends are changing very fast so what do you do who are the people you talk to how do you keep that learning mindset with curiosity who do you go to advice for you know, look i i'll tell you one thing you know over the last few years in the early part of our journey you know you get i was saying earlier right you get a lot of accolades from people uh, media especially and you become you too full of yourself then you then you get thrown thrown down then you kind of you know get the reality of life so the point being you get to a stage where you realize oh, wait a minute i do not know anything and the only way for me to uh you know go figure out things is you know learn from prob- probably every conversation which is which does not mean that you're talking to everybody all the time but it what it means is that you're very you know not just me but my whole management team is very open about going and seeking advice from people the kind of people and there are different kinds of people that we seek advice from so you saw one of my professors he's on our board the doctor uh, professor tarun khanna you know he's he's a great mind strategist like you know reno- world renowned he's on our board you know he will tell me something and i will probably get that 3 months later but it's because of the depth of you know some of the thoughts of some of those people that's that's phenomenal you know there are a lot of very successful entrepreneurs in the country very successful you know from the infosys to the tatas to the birlas to the mahindras you know to the ambanis there's they built such phenomenal institutions uh over the last many years they may not all of them they may not be in in a, in a similar business as ours but that does not change the fundamentals of the business so going and seeking their advice even if they give you an hour is so good because that tells you so many things to think about differently which may not be applicable on the spot tomorrow morning but certainly that you that you learn uh, you you learn that way and then we are also very aware that you know massive companies largely are created in the, you know outside of india they are created in the us so you know going and speaking with a lot of the folks who think very differently about creation of businesses is is another dimension to it like for example we are very close to you know microsoft and google and and we we'll, we try and spend a lot of time with them to learn from them on what what are the things we could do and there are such great institutions by the way to to really learn from so i'm actually very humble because a lot of people are very open to sharing in fact by the way you were ask me i think more people are far more open to sharing than what we think they are uh, you just have to you know reach out and ask to say i need help and just just sit there and listen to some of them share some brilliant ideas on on how they think of the world so um, i try and spend a lot of time you know doing that covid made it easier you know on the contrary because you don't have to fly anywhere to meet anybody you just could just call for 15 30 minutes and get all the gyan from different people as i said i'll keep it the last question and get we are on 5th may 8th may is the women's day uh, we're in bangalore and uh, we talk about how many women in leadership roles how many bo- women in boards how many women in stem tell me as the founder of such a large company 
which has an impact and also employs a lot of people. What are you doing to further women leaders, especially in technology? Yeah, look, we take a lot of pride in this. I have, I have, I have been public about this that women are a much better, uh, much better uh, people to have in the company than men. Uh, and for a very simple reason, because their level of dedication uh, and their level of commitment cannot be matched. Cannot be matched. All of you can clap. Uh. We, uh, we have roughly, we are, I actually believe we are underinvested uh, on the women's side. Uh, but still having said that, we have 38% of our uh, workforce being women. Um, and uh, there, there, was a, there was a point of time where every, every uh, global region of our company uh, was run by a woman. Even today, some of the major businesses that we have, for example, our China business run by women for the last nine years, uh, our Asia business run by women, phenomenal leader. Uh, our Roposo platform is run by a woman. So we have a lot of women that, that are in the leadership uh, uh, you know, positions for us. Um, and we feel very proud of that, and we see their level of dedication. Uh, they, are, they are those that, and I use that word, the word that I used earlier was very important. I absolutely believe in commitment uh, towards a cause and commitment towards a set of people. I think they are so committed towards a set of people that, you know, they are not faced by short-term up, short ups and downs. Uh, and they are not faced by materialistic things as much as probably, you know, a lot of us are. Uh, and I feel and I find that they have delivered, you know, disproportionately higher impact than I would have imagined. Uh, so I'm always very perturbed and confused when people say, you know, we should promote women. It's like, wait a second, you know, they are actually just going to rule the world no matter how you look at it, you know. Just that the number of them at, you know, that are applicable at times is less, and I think that requires grassroot level changes. But March 8 is, is always very special. We do a lot of stuff at the company. I don't know what we'll do this year. This is a little hard, but it's, it's always been a spe very special. Thank you so much. Please give Naveen Dwari a big round of applause. Uh, we take maybe one or two questions. So if you have a question, please raise your hand. And uh, yes, there is a gentleman here. There's a gentleman there. Can we get the mics quickly? Keep your question short. Tell us who you are. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, this is Ajay. Uh, just uh, congratulations. And uh, you were talking about artificial intelligence. And other side, you told about retaining the employees in your company. Uh, there is always a news that uh, artificial intelligence, robotics, and ML will throw human out of the job, whether it's a myth or uh, whatever. Please explain on that. Thank you. Yeah, look, I, I agree with you. I think there is a dichotomy in that, uh, in that uh, argument a little bit. Uh, but, you know, you cannot, you cannot uh, avoid the wave, right? It's, it's, it'll be like shoveling water with a bucket, you know, at the sea to say, I'm going to throw the water back. It's not going to happen. So the solution is not in being defensive about it. The solution is in upskilling everybody to, to, so that they are employable in this new world where if, you, if somebody else was doing data entry and that's not required anymore, we invest in up-leveling the person who is doing data entry as against trying to save the job and up-level the person so that they, they go. Now, these are tectonic transformations. These tectonic transformations will cause disruptions. Uh, says that industrialization did and you know all of these so this whole AIification is going to be as impactful as interest industrialization uh, which will take some jobs away for in a short period of time but fundamentally will bring you know humanity back in a much stronger way uh, so I am not a I, I am not defensive about it but I am very pro AI uh, but very importantly realizing the impact it will have so you know systematically you know, we have to solve for it. We may not have impact at my microcosm, within our own microcosm, but that's not, I don't think that's what you were asking. Uh, within our own company, we may not see the impact, but uh, it will have an impact, and we have to solve for it. Thank you. Hi, Naveen, this is Atul from ABP News. So my simple question is, you have highlighted the point which I learned and complete audience has learned. This was the learning. Learning should continue till the life goes on. There is a practical thing which comes in my mind. When I'm in business mode, in daily business, we are all, when learning goes in, in between, our execution part start because learning and the execution. When you learn something, you have to deliver. So when, especially me, when I'm in 
completely the delivering mode, the execution of daily of business. The learning goes behind the wall. I see, I need to learn this, but I hold on. Let it complete, then go on. How so you manage sometimes this? Sometimes we are too involved in day to day, yeah. and learning takes a back seat. You that's, know, <coughs> that's what he's asking. I'll answer that question, but let me tell you something else slightly before that. You know why we are, why this generation is going to be beaten so badly by the, by the younger generation? Because the younger generation has this ability to do multitasking like nobody's business. They can, they can be on their phone, they can be chatting, they can be watching something and they can be reading at the same time. And you and I don't have that ability unfortunately because we came into this world a little early. Now, the, the challenge that we do face, so the, so the reality of, of what you said it requires us to be bifocal. Our education system told us not to be bifocal. Our education system was such that you have studied once and you are done, right? Because, you know, you are going to get through mostly, mostly because you did well somewhere. You know, that one day or few days where the exams were held, you did well and so therefore all set, your life is set. And that's changed. The world is so dynamically changing because of technology that whatever we learned actually is so obsolete by the time you get out of, you know, within few years. So everything is changing within few years. And I think we have to be bifocal. Uh, if you're not in a self-learning mode, then you'll be out. There is no two ways about it. And similarly to that argument around AI, you know, there, there is a class of people who are, not who are not there where they can have this point of view of being bifocal and, and having this discipline of self-learning. But I think the world's moved to self-learning. The, the highest, uh, you know, you, you see the kids of today, they're, they're just using YouTube, et cetera, to just learn. You know, yours and our kids would just be doing that all the time and we would just wait for some report to like land on our table so that we read through the report. And I think that's the distinction. I think uh, learning is boiling down to uh, what I would call in a very small capsules. So if you learn in small capsule, then you don't have the issue of stepping back and taking a year to learn. I think today, you know, if you, if you chart out 15 minutes a day, by the way, you would find yourself very different in a year uh, than you were prior to that. But that just required 15 minutes. It's, it's like, it's a little bit like exercise. You could say that, you know, I don't need to exercise because I'm well, but you may not be a year later, right? Because you're not exercising. So I think it's just, it's that 15 to 30 minutes that you take out for exercise, it's, it's very similar to that. And uh, that excuse nobody's gonna buy anymore, unfortunately, like, you know. Okay. So we're going to end this. I'm going to request Nawal to ask a question. Nawal, I want you to ask, uh, because I know from past that Nawal will ask a very sharp question. Should we end it so, immediately then? Yes. No, no. Before, will, the, question, yes, yes, before right. the question. So uh, I'll take the brick bats, don't worry. So Naveen, I think uh, more than a question, what I'd like to you know, say is that uh, something that's already been spoken about with regards to COVID, I think as you rightly mentioned, a billion do dollar valuation eventually might puff up the ego of the entrepreneur and be very good for your vanity but eventually it's a you know speck in the universe and i think what has differentiated companies especially if you look at the last year leaders entrepreneurs is the empathy that you bring to the table with regards to you know the people you work with your co-workers your partners your vendors your clients and i think that's really set uh, good companies and good uh, need not mean scale in terms of revenue and valuation alone of course that is eventually the goal of business impact but bringing empathy to the table and genuine empathy not just for you know csr and public relations but genuine em empathy and there are groups some of the business groups that you earlier mentioned who have who been known to be uh, really good for their people i think that sets a very strong culture in the company which uh, makes sure that you know I mean, a lot of the new age companies that are into billion dollar valuation might not even be around five seven years down the line right because they'll end up burning the cash the business models will become obsolete but creating that culture in the company makes sure that a lot of people come to the table with the learning mindset and kind of keep building on ideas. the mistakes and new you know ideas. new ideas because eventually you know every entrepreneur every company is going to make mistakes nobody's not going to it is about what you learn from them 
And if the company is watching your back, if the entrepreneur, the owner, the promoter is watching your back and allowing you to make mistakes, I think that really also differentiates. Let me just extend the, the, you know, what you said a little bit. I think, you know, we have all been subjected to this education, which is Western. You know, we learn this, you know, uh, Amer corporate America way of, of dealing with people. And that's largely true in the last 15, you know, 20 years or so. And of course, they write so many books, so we read so many of them, uh, which is okay. I think we should learn. But I think we have now an opportunity to define an Indian way of running corporations. We, by definition, are a lot more empathetic towards, you know, our society, our people. We've just been, in the last 15, 20 years, have been, in, you know, trained to be a little less so because, you know, it was taught and told that being hard, you know, being an ass is much better to be more successful. But that's not true. Yeah, the old saying was that uh, nice guys finish last, so to say. Yeah, and that's not true. You know, look at Microsoft, Satya Nadella is an extremely nice guy. Where is the company? It's, you know, sitting at about $2 trillion of market cap. And he's a very nice guy. He doesn't, he's, not, he's not an ass and he doesn't need to be one. So, and I just think that whole, uh, we, have an, uh, we, have a, we have an advantage. We are empathetic at the core as a society. So as business leaders and as leaders as we grow, to, you know, bring this empathy at the core of what we do will come far more natural for us. And this could be, this whole COVID, et cetera, has just, you know, brought the importance of that out a lot more. And I think we have an opportunity to, you know, embed that into our corporate cultures on a paper, but because we actually mean it. And I think we will, we will come out successful uh, and we will make that happen because it, we, we care for people genuinely. Thank you. I just want to uh, let Naveen go by asking one thing about what has changed about entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship uh, in the last 12 months? Because clearly something has changed. Yeah, look, I think uh, there is empathy. I think entrepreneurs are a lot more empathetic. Uh, you know, but I think even more so than that, everybody has learned the, uh, has learned the importance of building a sustainable business. I think, you know, a lot of this unsustainability of businesses and therefore valuations is starting to wane down a lot more quickly. Uh, people want to build long-term sustainable businesses uh, with a very high level of empathy and care. And I think that's, that's visible in the conversations one is have, having around because everyone has seen, uh, you know, tough times. And when you see the tough times is when you really kind of evolve, and I think the whole ecosystem of entrepreneurship has evolved. Thank you, Naveen. Congratulations once again. Give uh, for Naveen Tewari the Exchange for Media Thank you so much. Influencer of the Year 2020 being awarded in March 2021. Congratulations.